بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم عند نام الله ما اسمه في الشل ما اسمه شفل عند بيوس and blessings be upon his final prophet and messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم hello everybody we continue from what we have left of last time talking about the faith in Allah and what it entails Imam Ibn Baz may Allah have mercy on him says that Faith in Allah also entails believing in Allah's perfect names and attributes which have been mentioned in his mother book and authentically reported in his trustworthy messenger without distorting these meanings. With a stop that I remember in, the, in his saying without distorting their meanings, tahrif. What is called tahrif is one of the four things that you have to avoid when it comes to Allah's perfect names and attributes there are four things that we have to avoid number one tahrif which means that or translated as distorting distorting means to take the meaning to take the meaning of um, the quality of Allah the name or the attribute take the meaning and uh, uh, take the text and uh, reject the meaning or change the meaning this is called tahrif for example Allah has told us in his noble book that he has frozen over, over his throne Allah has risen over his throne okay and the meaning of riding over the throne is very clear for anyone who understands the language. Rising over the throne is well known. Means that Allah is over his throne, almighty and exhausted, in the manner that uh, Allah wills. We don't know how, but we believe that Allah Almighty and Majesty has risen over his throne and this rising is well known for everyone who understands the language which, which means that Allah is over his throne with the manner of that he wills okay some people think that rising over the throne has another meaning which this meaning it's not found in the language of Arab. They think that rising over the throne means uh, capturing the throne or conquering the throne. And this meaning is not found in the language of Arab. In the Arabic language, this meaning is not found. So, scores of Islam, ulama, and a'imma consider this type of of interpretation to the meaning as tahrif some others call it ta'wil but actually it is tahrif and really it is tahrif means changing the meaning which is well known in the Arabic language so this is an example for the fact that you have to avoid tahrif don't distort the meaning don't change the meaning of uh, the verse uh, considering Allah's qualities and attributes this is number one number two of the things that should be avoided denying their meaning which is called in Arabic ta'atil ta'atil means denying the meaning each one of these attributes and qualities has a specific meaning which is well known in the language and Allah talk to the people with the Holy Quran in the language that they know it verbal so you have uh, not to negate the meaning of the of the quality for example Allah told us uh, about the descriptions of himself among these of these descriptions that Allah is all here Allah is all know means meaning that Allah hears everything Allah knows everything Allah uh, 
goes uh, uh, on and Allah uh, rose over his throne and so on. These attributes has their own meanings. So don't negate the meaning. Uh, if you negate the meaning, the attribute of the quality will become nonsense. Will give no sense at all. So that all the attributes and the qualities and the names will be just like proper nouns. Don't bearing meaning in themselves. Okay. And number three, uh, I think we stopped uh, at number three, which is takif. He said, takif, which is describing the manner of the attribute or the quality. You should not describe the manner how Allah rose over his throne, how Allah hears everything, how Allah knows don't ask about Allah with the word using the word how because you don't know how is Allah so actually you don't know how uh, the attributes or the qualities of Allah the last one is making similarity to Allah which is called tamthil tamthil is likening Allah or is to liken Allah to one of his creation to say for example Allah hears like uh, so and so Allah sees like so and so this is called tamthil or likening here we have got a very excellent rule to understand this very well and this excellent rule happened as a result of a, a story happened to Imam Malik Imam Dar al Hijra the place where our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu has migrated Al Madina Al Munawwara it's well known Imam and one of the very uh, famous scholars of Islam. Al Imam Malik was asked, someone asked him about how Allah uh, has uh, risen over his throne. Ask him this question. Uh, outline, you have to be careful about the words that, uh, that uh, man used. He said, how Allah has risen over his throne. And we you remember, we said that we shouldn't ask about using the word how. That man said to Imam Malik, how Allah has risen over his throne. Imam Malik got angry and swear evaporated from his head so that he said rising over, his, over, rising over the throne is well known. He said, rising over the throne is well known. And how it is done is unknown. Believing in it is an obligation. And asking about it is an innovation. This is very excellent rule. Rising over the throne is well known. This means that when you say to anyone who knows the language very well, when you say to him that Allah has risen over his throne, Ar Rahman ala al Arsh is tawa. It's well known. It means that Allah is over the throne, over uh, all his creations. It's clear and well known. So he said that rising over the throne is well known. And this is one part of the phrase of Imam Malik Rahimahullah May Allah shower his blessings on him Rising over the throne is well known uh, How it's done is unknown Believing in it, believing in the fact that Allah has risen over his throne Believing in it is an obligation this means that you must believe in this because it's mentioned in the whole Quran and it's reported also in a sunnah so that you have to believe in this believing in it is an obligation and asking about it and the pronoun it here refers to how Allah has risen over his throne 
it doesn't refer to Allah has risen over his throne. You see the difference? Believing in it. Because some people misunderstand the saying of Imam Malik. They thought that Imam Malik said, you shouldn't ask, uh, you shouldn't ask about whether Allah has uh, risen over his throne or not. This is not the meaning that Imam Malik intended. But he said, uh, asking concerning it, asking concerning the fact that how Allah has risen over the throne. This is unallowed, it's unlawful. This is haram. Don't ask how Allah did so, how Allah says so, how Allah so and so. Okay? He said, asking concerning it is an innovation. So that after that, Al Imam Malik took or employed someone in church to get this man and throw it out because he considered this man to be an innovator because he asked a question that a sahaba the companions of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi didn't ask and those who follow sahaba and have the same belief in allah didn't ask this question so that you have to avoid asking such questions don't ask how allah says so and so how allah did so and so how allah is so good uh, so in order to have a correct belief and to correct our understanding concerning Allah's names and attributes, we have to use this rule which is mentioned, this excellent rule which is mentioned by Imam Malik, rahimahullah ta'ala, whenever it comes to uh, any issue concerning the beautiful names and uh, attributes of Allah, you say that, for example, if you ask about um, Allah's all knowing, Allah is all knowing, means that Allah knows everything. You say all knowing or knowing is well known, and how it is done is unknown. Believing in it is an obligation. And asking about it is an innovation. So this rule should be uh, used and utilized with all the perfect names and the beautiful, the, the beautiful names and the uh, attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that al-a'imma like Sufyan, Thawri, al-awza'i and other a'imma of Islam says that when it comes to the perfect name and the attribute, leave them as they have been reported. Leave them as they have been reported. Whenever you come across a word talking about the description of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, mentions, for example, uh, Allah is all knowing, Allah is all hearing, Allah hears everything, Allah knows everything, Allah descends down, Allah uh, rose over his throne, and so on, leave them as they have been reported without describing, without tahrif, without ta'tir, without tamsir, without everything that likens Allah to his creation. And without denying the meaning that uh, they denote. They, uh, inshallah, will be on the straight path, on the approach or the way of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Thank you very much. Inshallah, we see you next time.